G'day, someone wanted me to test these out. These are skate plates for your circular saw to give you a nice smooth ride over your material that you're cutting and keep you straight. We've got sides. These basically come with a side skate. So like your normal circular saw setup where you've got your, your ripping guide, that goes on the end of the rip guide basically and keeps it all running nice and smooth in theory. So they make a couple of different ones here. They made, uh, the company is called Cirque Saw Technologies. This is, I'll use the American terminology, this one's for a sidewinder and this one's for a worm drive or a top handle circular saw and a rear handle circular saw. Uh, I'm gonna give this one a crack right now. And there is also bigger guides as you can see here including the skate guide zilla stick zilla on the end of it means it must be big and good right so we're gonna try that out see if it's any good i'll go and see if i can find a saw that'll fit hmm too small uh too big too small again isn't that a track saw and it's too big Ah, blades the wrong way. Oh, getting closer. Still a bit small. Ah, oh, blades the wrong way again. Wait, um, that's a metal cutting saw. Last one. Oh, 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 maybe, maybe, just maybe, this one will work. Let's have a wee look-see. Let's just see if it'll all line up perfectly. Right, let's give this a crack. I've got it set up to do a 100 millimeter cut. And the advantage I can see of this over a track saw is that I can do repetitive 100 millimeter cuts like you would with a standard rip fence without having to move a track. So that's one positive about it. But will it stay straight? Supposedly I've heard them say, you know, because of the rollers it'll cut straight. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can still make this cut like shit. Let's see what happens. First up, we'll just go for it. Oops, hit there. Made the cut a little bit narrower than the 100. I'm just gonna see how easy it is to just steer it off track. As you can see, piece of cake. Now it's stuffed up all my next cuts. Gotta do a straight cut without it now, don't I? Mmm, bummer. Okay, glides along fairly nicely. But, like, how hard is it to just push the saw along anyway? Well, let's take these out. I'm not in love with these tiny little thumb screws here. They don't feel like they lock in tight enough to me. So, yeah. And the one on the front, as you can see, can pop off because it only just catches it. Because, unfortunately, this Makita has this shape cut out of the front of it. Which is right where you want to screw it on. Anyway, I'll see how hard it is to push it without it, eh? Can I do it? Yeah, sorry, um, what was the point of this? What is the actual point? Like, how hard is it to just push a saw? This bit here is probably more useful. Like, the actual guide is probably, look how easily things come apart. This is more useful than that. I don't see the point in that. Uh, you know, your saw glides anyway, you know, it's not that hard to push a saw, come on. And, but this would help maybe keep things better, especially the big long one, just for keeping things straighter, because, yeah, let's have a look at the big long one. So I've put this wider skate on. Let's see if that helps make it just run a little bit straighter, a little bit smoother. OK, 
Okay, something I noticed about that cut that I didn't notice on the other ones was when the roller hits bits of shit that are on your board, if you've got a flat plate, there's a good chance it'll just push it along, scoot it out of the way. The roller went straight over it, which isn't great for a good cut. Um, so what's the advantage of having the rollers instead of just pushing your base along? Well, maybe if you haven't got shit all stuck in your rollers, you get a little bit of crap stuck in there, a little bit of metal, you're gonna be doing nice damage to your timber. Um, if your base is all scratched up on here, then it'll be better maybe, but for how long? Um, how long those last as well will be interesting. I just, I'm sorry, I'm not really seeing the point in this thing. Um, I don't know how much it costs because it was just a trial one, <laughs> but you know, it's not a track, so it's not going to get you, your cuts aren't going to be any better because you're still using the same saw, the blade still hasn't got anything right next to it to help you get a nice cut like you might do on a track saw. So what's the point? Is it for people who just have no energy left to push a saw along a piece of wood? I mean we're getting pretty bloody weak aren't we? Come on. I mean uh, I'm all for making things easier and stuff but I don't think this makes it easier plus I don't trust any of these connections plus when you're putting it in if you don't get it hard tight up against the front you're gonna stuff your cut anyway because your blade's not going to be straight you can still go off on an angle like you would without the rollers, so there's no advantage there. Um, yeah, and I just don't trust this. It's really just for old school saws that, old school corded saws, most modern saws, anything smaller than a seven and a quarter doesn't fit. <laughs> um, anything bigger won't fit. I don't get it. I don't see the value in this. Sorry, skate plate, but that's my two cents. Wouldn't bother. Spend the extra money, get yourself a track saw. Do it right. This is just an unnecessary. Look how much bulkier it makes your saw, and it makes it far more delicate when you go to put it down now. You're far more likely to damage something, snap something off. Plus, this thing wasn't straight either. You can tell there, the thing's got a bow in it before it even started. It's not often I try something and dislike it this much, but I just really don't see the point. I kind of like the idea of this particular bit, and it would be nice if this fitted in any of my other saws, but it doesn't even fit in the really big ones that have the wide um, rip fence fucking slots. So, And with the side handle on it, it just kind of feels weird, because it means if you do have to keep pushing this this way to make sure it cuts straight, then, well, what's the point starters? But also means you have to use your left hand to pull the trigger and hold your sword. Which just feels weird, and I don't think that helped at all anyway. And look how much it wobbles. The only real redeeming feature I can see of this thing is that you can turn around this way like this, then shove that in the side of your saw, and then you can run it along a wall or some other parallel surface to get a cut in a floor or some other parallel surface. So that could be handy, but apart from that, like... If you are going to buy one, just make sure you check what saws it can be used on because it is limited to, um, like I say, seven and a quarter inches basically. And... <laughs> old school saws as well it's it's not designed for modern places as far as i'm concerned and it just makes your tool bigger heavier more prone to being knocked and becoming out of whack um, so less accurate <laughs> it's just it's a solution to a problem that didn't exist that's my two cents thanks for watching see you later Like, what's the point?